Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial brought to you by Louis Art. My name is Emmanuel Lukafo and before I continue, I would like to thank you guys so much for making this channel reach up to 4,000 subscribers. I know it's nothing compared um, to other big YouTube channels, but this means a lot to me. I really appreciate the fact that you guys enjoy my video and find, find it really helpful. So what we'll be doing today is I'm trying to start a new series called Blender Motion Graphics where we'll just be experimenting with different modifiers and trying to create cool looking animations that you can use in your various projects. So as you can see on the screen, this is what we'll be trying to recreate today. Um, so let's jump in and not waste time. What we want to do is just add a cylinder and you can hit F6 to bring out this menu or I think you can go to edit and under adjust last expression uh, operation then you can bring it I just assigned a shortcut to that so that's why I can hit F6 and bring it out okay so for this add cylinder I want to change the vertices to about 16 and the end guns will switch it from end guns to um, nothing so we have like an open cylinder and finally um, we'll re the radius we want to reduce it a bit so we have something looking like this then we can push this up and scale it slightly so before we continue let's apply the rotation and scale pop into edit mode and just add some edge loops okay we'll just apply the rotation and scale again and make sure the origin is in the geometry and we can proceed from here so after this we'll just add an icosphere and push this upwards so for pre display purposes um, i'll go to the object display type and under viewport display i want to switch it to bound so we have this nice looking bound okay um now i will select this cylinder and go to the modifier tab and under the form you want to select cast modifier um, so it, it has a very simple interface uh, what we want to do now for the control object because right now there's nothing able to affect it so we want to select um, set that to the icosphere um, so it looks like this so when we move this icosphere we get this kind of nice motion um, also we want to also click on the transformation this enables us to be able to scale this and it's the influence scales with it um, everything looks looking great so far so let's scale this slightly and I want the scale of the icon set to remain like this so when, even when I press Alt S for cancelling out the scale it's gonna still remain like this the way to do that is if, if you press Ctrl A you can set um, scale to data um, data so if I scale this and press Alt, Alt S it just takes me back there okay so when I move this now we get it's kind of cool effect um, but one problem is oh, if I move this so one problem is this is influencing the whole geometry I just want it to affect um, the areas and its proximity so I don't want it to really affect any other place which is not needed um, so let's set that up so what we want to do is select this object okay and go to the physics tab we want to select the dynamic paint so if you've never used dynamic paint it's quite powerful um, so basically there are two types of dynamic paint um, the canvas and the brush so basically the canvas is like the paper and the brush is the pen so yeah that's that um, so we'll add the canvas and you can add multiple canvas to create multiple layers of um, effect um, for the surface we want to switch it from paint to weight and that should be all um, but what we want to do finally is under output uh, you can add, act, either do it two ways you can create a vertex group and call this um, effect okay and go to the physics tab and select it here um, that works or you could just hit the plus icon and it does the same effect um, so once that's set up we are good to go but we need a brush for it to actually work so um, to select the brush we also add a dynamic paint to the icosphere and the type will switch it from canvas to brush and we'll add a brush so 
will leave everything as it is except from the source so we want to switch it from mesh volume to mesh volume plus proximity so this enables us to have like really nice fall off and also you also have control over the fall off so you can either use smooth constants or you can actually create a custom co uh, color ramp which is really helpful so once you have that you are all set up um, so let's assign everything so the vertex group will select the vertex group we created and if we move it nothing is happening that's because blender modifier um, stack works like a stack so it respects the hierarchy so for that to work we have to push the dynamic paint above the cast modifier so now what you see is it is just affecting this area so we can get this kind of cool effect okay uh, right now if you want to actually preview the influence of the dynamic paint um, let me show you how you can achieve that um, it's not as easy as, as it was before um, so you have to go to your node um, sh your shader node select this mesh right and go hit new and now we're gonna add an attribute node and select this vertex group so you just copy the name and paste it and then let's add a converter and what we want to do here is just give this uh, R we'll call this red we'll make the first one red make the second one RGB uh, uh, let's make this blue and make this green or you could just RGB so it looks like this okay so now we'll select set it as a factor and let's preview it okay uh, my, my bad this is I made a huge mistake uh, you can use if you can preview a but um, a weight paint but what you can preview is a vertex group so let's set that up I told you earlier you can have multiple canvas so we'll just hit the plus icon right here and leave everything as it is but what we want to do is on that weight map we'll just hit the plus icon okay and now if we go to input vertex group vertex color sorry about that so input vertex color will select the DP dynamic paint weight map and if we collect um, set it uh, you can see we can preview it and let's flip it so it's more accurate so we have something that looks like this so now we can move this and we can actually see the influence okay so that's that um, that proves uh, let's keep creating effect um, next um, let's make it look more complex so let's add let me just create another material let's add a wireframe uh, so because we have a vertex group now we can create multiple effects um, let's try wave uh, no not wave let's try uh, wire where is that okay wireframe so it looks something like this then we'll set it to the vertex group so we can create a cool effect already um well, what what we want to do is uncheck that and set the material to be something like this so we have a nice cool effect and i think you can uh, so control that okay um so let's um kind of flip it so it's all wire but when it touches there it becomes um let's add one more um the mask set it to that flip it so that we can reduce the threshold something like this um let's add the subdivision so it's getting kind of I'm just experimenting with different stuff so I don't want it to be smooth like this I want it to remain sharp 
So I will set it to simple and push it above the or below the mask and add a triangulate because I want to get like sharp edges. Let's see if we can achieve that. Let's see if we put up of the wire. So you can just try different effects. This is really fun to play with. Uh, let's see if we could add something. Let's try displacement. Okay, so we'll select the vertex group and let's add nice texture. So you can create something like this. Uh, it looks cool, like. And once it's gone, you can. Actually, it looks cool. Uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. That's um, the first experimental video. You'll be hoping to see more from me, something that looks like this. Um, thank you again for watching this tutorial. I ho hope you had fun with it. Um, bye bye for now and see you next time.